at the core of the game is always an element of artistry. Whether a flick, a dummy, a step over, a chant, all building a chorus in unison towards a moment of celebration. My second act in MLS has brought me to New York City to connect with current and former players, artists, and more than anything creative, using photography, fashion, film, music, dance, the arts as a way of connecting to the sport that we all love and painting their own picture of the beautiful game. People sharing so much, people are kind of rubbing off on one another. And I think guys are really starting to step out and like share their other passions. You see guys like Warren doing clothing lines and photography and film, film stuff, which is sick. Curry Shelton on my team, he does graphic design. Sometimes he designs his own pictures and all that kind of stuff. Kwame Aua is teaching himself how to play the piano. He's po posting it on his IG story every day. It's sick. I think it's, I think it's cool to see guys like really stepping out with other passions and using their time wisely because we have a lot of time on our hands to, to do something productive. I remember MLS Cup last year. I see you walk up in a photographer shirt <laughs> yeah. and I was like, Ethan Wright, what are you doing, man? Yeah, uh, man. How did that happen? So I did an internship for Players Tribune. They didn't tell me until like three days before too. They're like, you know, we're flying, you got you tickets to Toronto to shoot the cup. And I was like, whoa, that's sick. And it was cool, it was cool to shoot it because I, like, obviously I wanted to play in it, but you know, my other passion is photography and be able to be, be a part of it in that way as well. Paul Pierce has done it, CJ McCollum has done it. I think I'm the only soccer player that's ever done it. I think that's just us three, I think. The capsule collection, third rail, Mitchell and S, and you shot the whole lookbook. Yeah, yeah. So Third Rail wanted to design a, a clothing line for, for their group. The MLS approached me about shooting the lookbook because they knew I was into photography and I, I jumped on it. I mean, anytime I can support a group that supports me on the field, off the field, with my other passion, it's just, I thought it was dope. You don't see a lot of clubs doing that. No, that's cool. I mean, it's very New York. <laughs> Where did this love of photography come from? How did you get into it to begin with? For me, uh, my friends in high school who I all played soccer with, obviously, um, we all collect, collected sneakers, and sneakers was like, if you had sneakers, you had to have had a cool camera to be able to sell your sneakers on eBay and all that, so we bought a camera all together, and then the sneakers got sold because we were going to college. Over time, I've gotten better and better, and it turned into like a, a real thing. I don't, I don't sit on the couch anymore playing FIFA, and I walk around the city taking pictures. It's a really nice view. I'm not going to lie. You can't get more in New York than this. I agree. Pizza on the roof. Is it bad if I'm going like one in? Am I supposed to go in, in order on this? No. no, no. I can, pick, style, yeah. I can pick my slice. Be creative, man. Right. When you play for the Red Bulls, uh, what do you look back on? What stands out to you most about that time in your life? That was the first club that felt like there was a standard that I had never felt before in terms of professionalism, the way they treated the players, the way you travel, just the way that they, they, they cared for you, that you always felt like uh, you were the main priority. You've also transitioned into media work ahead of me, you helped me a lot as far as helping me on my transition, giving me advice to moving to New York, both California guys. What's the transition been like for you moving to the media side? I mean, it's a grind like anything else, right? I mean, my main goal first off was to just get as many reps as I could. It's just like anything else, you start to get, it starts to get, I remember the first few times just being on camera and stuff and just screaming, monotone, screaming into a camera going like, is this really what I'm supposed to be doing? Like, is this, how am I ever gonna be good at this? And it's just like, you rebuild that confidence, you kind of start from scratch, and you know that just like from a playing career, the more work you put into it, the better you're going to get, the more you're going to see those yourself grow. And that's hard to do in places that aren't New York City, right? It's the media capital of the world, so you have just so much going on, and it's no better place than to kind of like dive in and test the waters. The only thing I haven't done is acting stuff, you know? I did take an improv class, actually. You told me yeah. you took improv, yeah. 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 What I like about New York is there is no place for more self-confidence. And it will make you question your own self-confidence, but at the same time, it's inclusive. Everybody is welcome. And I think that's the opportunity here for our sport and for our league is to bring people in that may not have always felt welcome maybe somewhere else. Totally agree. Mark Bamuthi Joseph is a global TED fellow whose latest piece, Pelota, is a meditation on the racial politics of soccer through dance and poetry. Dame la pelota, dame la pelota, double down on dark skin, bleed skin, Sosa, social, holster, holding up the weapon of destruction, structured in the shape of black boy, genius, black girl, run girl, Venus, Felix, dame la pelota, turn and look like touch the rock, knock its side of the foot, black gold of the sun, to victory is one son, football always in the pocket, passing, pressing, pessimism, kids are missing, dads in action, active actors, in their own lives, fractured habits, almost game time.
on. As a dancer and as a player, I see the game as a dance leading someone as opposed to passing to someone. The difference between, you know, passing it square, you know, and even dummying a ball behind. There's all this um, unspoken communication that happens on the dance floor with a partner and also happens on a soccer field with a teammate, ultimately to make something joyful and beautiful. In the historic Guggenheim Museum, yeah. and we're setting up for the show. I went to school up the street and to kind of connect my love of art you know, school where I grew up, this particular place, and my love of the game. It's truly, really exciting. We have a special particular history as a former teacher of mine in high mm -hmm. school and coach mm -hmm. on the soccer team. I remember uh, going to see, when you were playing with the Dynamo, I remember uh, we were actually performing at the University of Houston, and uh, I saw that you were playing a match, and I couldn't be more excited to support you. Growing yeah. up here, there was no MLS. No. Now there's two teams. Yes. How have you seen the city itself change to embrace soccer culture more broadly and yeah. MLS? Certainly the demographics of the city are different. It's certainly been a, you know, a really long journey, but when I see folks at NYCFC games and when I see you know, what's happening with the Red Bulls, you know, you have bona fide stars in the city. You know, David Villa, that's like, he's a real ass star, <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the city. And um, that helps in a city that is truly global in its reach and in its access. We make a point in Pelota about talking about how migration is natural and beautiful. And the movement that you see players executing on the field mirrors the movement that you see in our humanity. You know, moving in New York City, for instance, you have to be able to move really deftly in tight spaces. Even when I think about, you know, what it is to like kind of uh, pop, you know, like just imagine yourself in like hella tight spaces trying to, you know, trying to get around, yeah, you know, trying to get around exactly. <laughs> like you just like fighting through traffic, right? Like that's a dance. New York City is a destination for both athletic movement and cultural movement. And so it makes sense that the league is enjoying great success here and that more and more folks are playing around the city, generating these connections between, you know, sport and art and, um, and love. Right back. The right back is like a train track. It helps the team get back on the attacking map. They also come back and defend quick like a flash. Center back is usually the guardian, the warrior on the field, like a soldier in a war ready to give it all. The man who gives it his all and gets the fans to applaud. That forward. The one who runs when long passes are given. The one who follows all the shots. The one who tries to score when they can. Put the ball in the back of the net, like a hard-working single mother. You guys in this room, how many dream of being professional soccer players? <laughs> so most, <laughs> most everyone, what would be your advice to everyone in this room that might have those dreams? And for you too, Josh, you might have those dreams, but what, what should they be focused on now? Through, through, we have some, I think, high school seniors even in, in this room. I'm playing professional soccer now, and I know it's, it could end tomorrow. It could end whenever. And I think we all need to know that, like, there's life after soccer. You need to focus on school. You need to focus. So you should have something. You should be working on something while you're playing. Whether you make it on the pitch or not, there's still a way to involve sport and your love of culture as a career. Yeah. Joshua Kesey co-founded Street Etiquette, shooting street style photography with a friend. That's turned into a business with an offshoot tonal, a stock photography image source for people of color, and now doing work as an artistic director on behalf of Adidas. And what we do is basically provide like a, an insight into what's happening in sport and culture. So I went to Japan to shoot Real Madrid. So I shot like Marcelo, shot Benzema. You want to have a job that is still involved in football, like the pitch isn't the last place. If you don't make it pro, it's not like your dreams are over. Because just as Ethan said, he's still looking for the next opportunity on how he could grow himself. So there's always opportunities there. If, if the love for sport is there, there's always going to be an opportunity. You're behind the lens and like you're just like kind of figure things out and you're just shooting. It's the same way when you're dribbling. Like you're still taking a shot. Whether you kick the goal or you press the shutter, it's still a shot. You know what I mean? So everybody's inspired by somebody else. And I think previously just thought on how people would think, they'd think in boxes. Like this person is this, we label them this, this person is that, we label them that. But between like the jock and the creative or artsy kid, like there's not there's one kid now. Like a kid can like Supreme and like niche clothing and like streetwear, but still be a fan 
of soccer or still be or still be on the team exactly and still be into these things like i don't think we need to separate anymore because we're all inspired by each other especially with social media it just made everything a global conversation so you can't just be one guy where like you're just an athlete there needs to be way more of that cross-pollination for people to see like soccer isn't some foreign thing like it's literally in your backyard you can always access the game in some way right so through photography soccer if you want to be a doctor you can operate on work specifically with athletes uh, if you want to be a lawyer you can be on a legal team you want to be a creative you can work with a brand for me the core is always uh, education and learning and you guys are in such a great position to create your own future. <coughs> Turn your life from Red Bull Arena to the Guggenheim, and from NYCFC to street etiquette, the arts are influencing soccer, and soccer is infiltrating the arts to unlock the creative potential in the next generation of American soccer. When we look at development on the field and unlocking the potential of this next generation, we can't just look at success as far as being relevant on the field. It must be undergirded by a cultural cachet and capital we build from the ground up, from the streets to the stadiums, and not in reverse. <laughs>